I'll take this seat out so you can see what's inside the fuselage a little clearer. And uh, this is still fairly simple. These are the, the blocks which hold the, uh, the whole frame in place. There'll be four holes drilled in there and bolted together. And it's very sturdy. And the same in the back there with two, a bolt on each side to anchor the frame. This is a housing for the wheel. And so the, the frame actually has the whole landing gear system fastened into it, with the axle running through. And that wheel is located uh, just after the center of gravity, just to maybe an inch or two behind the center of gravity. And that way, to do a, a, a center of gravity balance check, you can climb on the ship, put the canopy on, then the aircraft should just balance on the main gear. If it uh, always tends to fall heavily to the nose, you know, it's a little bit nosy. It can still fly it all right, but it won't be as comfortable. And, but if the ship falls back on its tail and stays there, it might be uh, wise to add a little bit of a weight up into the, uh, the nose of the glider, I mean, two, two or three pounds of lead. I can invite them to fly it, but they'll all turn it down. Because they know flying wings are extremely dangerous to fly. But the thing is, the other pilots will watch me fly week after week after week, and I'm still living. <laughs> so they, uh, they began to wonder, well, maybe it does fly all right. And uh, so I invite them to take a short hop in the glider on an auto tow. I said, Maybe just go up to uh, five or six feet and hang on there for, it's beautiful. Uh, fly along for about 500 to 1,000 feet, then pull the release and glide in. I said, this will give you some nice. confidence in it. And that really turns the, everything around. Down. And they'll say, it, it flies down. just like any other airplane. Right. So uh, from there, I might give them another tow a little bit higher up. To, get more familiar with it, feel more comfortable with it. Then I will uh, invite them to take an airplane tow. And so they, uh, they, they do. And uh, sometimes uh, they'll stay up for an hour or two. And other times uh, they may uh, just make a short circuit of the airfield and come in. But they all, once, you, once they've done that, they're hooked on flying wings. They're extremely uh, excited about it and tell everybody that they've, they've flown a flying wing and lived. The, the parameters of the, the gliders, when I designed them, first I have to look at what purpose. Am I going to race it? Am I going to just float around the sky like a hang glider? Or am I going to have a, a weekend sport flying machine that's uh, suitable for club use or whatever? So a lot to ask, what speed do you want to fly at? So if you want a real slow flying machine, you have to have a lot of wing area and light weight. In other words, a low wing loading. Uh, the Monarch was an open cockpit machine. So I wanted it to be like a hang glider, like an experience of all the sensations of, of flight, which I did. Uh, but if you want performance, high performance, then you're going to have to have an enclosed cockpit where it's much cleaner and you can go at much higher speeds. Because the advantage of a closed cockpit is that the cold won't bother you. You can go very high altitudes and the, the cold temperatures up there are you know, kept outside. Now wingspan has a lot to do with sinking speed. If you have a long wing, your, your sink rate through the air will be a lot less. You know, short wing gliders never did very well because they just had too high a, we call span loading. Unless you make it very, very light. Probably the hang gliders came closest to that, having a very light weight. The aircraft only weighs 70 pounds compared to sailplane, which weighs several hundred pounds. 